continuing this idea of logic, let's take something that we already know how to do, like solve an algebraic equation, and do this in sort of a more geometric way where we're providing a reason or logic behind what we're doing. So we're going to solve this problem the way we always solve an algebra problem. It's just we're going to do this as a column. And on the right over here, we're going to provide a reason for each step that we do along the way. Uh, again, getting us ready for some things coming up later this year that are going to involve logic and proving things. So always start with uh, your original statement. So I'm going to say 2x plus 5 equals 20 minus 3x. And the reason that I know that's true is I'm always going to say that that was given to me. So the next thing I might do is I might add 3x to both sides to get 5x plus 5 equals 2. Because I used addition to this, I'm going to call my reason for this the addition property. Okay, see where that comes from? Very tricky. Uh, next up, uh, I want to continue solving for x, so I'll subtract 5 from both sides. So guess what? I'm going to call this the subtraction property. Uh, and then finally, I'll finish this by dividing both sides by 5. And since I divided, I'm going to say that this was the division property. Uh, again, my algebra should be old stuff, just getting down to this idea of x equals 3. But what's new is going through and justifying each step with these properties. So once again, let's just do uh, one more to see that we've got this idea down. So I'm going to start with my original statement, and my reason that I know that's true is just because it's given to me. Uh, next up, I have that negative 4 outside parentheses, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute uh, the negative 4. And my reason that I know that step is true is because of the distributive property. Uh, as I continue to solve this equation, I have negative 44x minus 8 equals 80. So I'll add 8 to both sides. Again, because I added, I'm going to call this the addition property. And finally, to get rid of the negative 44 that's being divided by x, you guys all know what to do. Uh, divide both sides by negative 44, so I get my final answer. My reason, though, that I know that final answer is true is because of the division property. There are three other properties we'll look at as well called the reflexive property, the symmetric property, and the transitive property. The reflexive property, and you may you may think I'm saying the word reflective like a mirror. I'm actually saying reflexive, but think of reflective because what reflexive property does is it just says something is equal to itself. So for example, if they say the measure of angle A, using the reflexive property, we would just say that that's equal to the measure of angle A. I call it the no duh property, which just means something's equal to itself. So by the same logic, we could say that 7 equals 7. Uh, it just says that something's equal to itself. Next up is the symmetric property, and you guys know that symmetric just means, you know, you could fold something over and it, it matches up with itself. So symmetric property kind of has that same visual. They're giving you the example, if segment AB is equal to or congruent to segment CD, then the symmetric property just says flip that around. So segment CD would be equal to segment AB. Uh, and then last up is the transitive property. This one's a bit... Uh, longer it looks like at first but it's not very difficult i usually use an example of money let's say that i have the same amount of money as you and you have the same amount of money as your best friend well, what does that mean about the amount of money that i and your best friend have and if you can follow that you, it's pretty easy to see that me and your best friend have the same amount of money so the transitive property is kind of that same idea they're going to start you out with um, segment a b for example is congruent to segment c d and then segment c d is congruent to segment e f well, because uh, they both have CD in common, I'm going to sort of link that up and say, well, that's sort of the middleman. Let's just get rid of the middleman. We don't need it and link up the beginning to the end. So I could just say that AB is equal to EF by the transitive property. And so let's go ahead and try using these properties we've just looked at to complete a couple statements. So first up is the addition property. So telling me that I can add the same thing to both sides of the equation. So they start me out with uh, A, B, and C, B being equal to each other. Well, if we add 7 to one side, we know that we have to add, add 7 to the other side. So I'll complete this statement by saying C, uh, C, B plus 7. If I add 7 right here, I've got to make sure I add 7 right there. Uh, next up is the multiplication property. So it's multiplication property. So same idea. They give me two angles that are equal. The measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. Well, they've multiplied one of the angles by six. So by the multiplication property, I have to do the same thing to both sides. So let's go ahead and multiply the other angle by six. So I'll say six times the measure of angle two if I want to keep this uh, sort of equation balanced. And last up, we have the symmetric property. Remember, that sort of took something and folded it back over on itself. So they, get, they give you the statement x equals 6. So using the symmetric property, we can also say that 6 equals x if I flip it around. 